Call to order. Public comments. <laughs> um, Rob, I'm going to guess that our neither of our um, potential board members could reschedule. Uh, you had them on the line for the 14th. That is not true. I believe that Chad will be available. He will be joining us. Oh, great. Uh, Rachel was bummed that she couldn't, but she had prior engagement, but it is still very interested in the board. Oh, that's good news. Yay. Yay. She's there in spirit. Yes, hello, sorry. I just have to take something off the stove and then I'll turn my camera on. <laughs> We have definitely got a quorum. Who are we? Hey, Chad, how are you? Hello. Welcome, Chad. Welcome, Chad. Thank you. You just witnessed the achieving of a quorum. Oh, we haven't come nice. to order yet, but we're still waiting for our secretary to give us a heads up. And I think one board member who's got to get something off the stove. We are presently a seven member board with room for nine. That's what our bylaws say. So we have, uh, we got to hit the number four. We usually do all right, but last, you know, it's that time of year. People get busy. Mm -hmm. It had been quite a while since we had to postpone a meeting due to a lack I don't know of if you guys have heard, but Christmas is like Saturday or something like that. So I, I got to be <laughs> shopping. Like, oh, coming up on me. Really <laughs> yeah, we, we decided not to have it this close to Christmas and had it the week before, but then we didn't have it the week before. It's Actually, we're, we're fourth Tuesday is our rhythm. And we'll mess with that if there's a holiday in the way or a vacation in the way, but um, that is our. And just so you go, Guys, know the additional person attending is Orca. It's the staff they are recording so that they have it as well. So, oh, wonderful. You can say hi to Zach and Jen if they're, if they're, oh, hi, hi, uh, Orca. Are we going to be broadcast or cable cast? I should say, uh, after post production, we're not going live with it. Yes. Streaming it, but okay, I'm ready. Beautiful. I will, uh, I'll call us to order at 6 33. Quorum achieved. Present, Rob Chapman, Executive Director, myself, Board Chair, Dave Connor, Sue Batman, Rachel Feldman, Carlos Diaz, taking care of the minutes for us. Thank you so much. Did you and, want to uh, do a brief introduction for Chad? Or was I was just getting ready to say, and right. Chad, I don't know your last name. Irvin. Chad Irvin. Hi, Chad Hi. Irvin. Um, we're actually, after call to order, we roll right into public comment. If, if you just want to say more than hi, the floor <laughs> could be yours. We should wait till Rachel's on so she can hear. And what I meant, Michael, is maybe we as board members could inter introduce ourselves to Chad. Oh, certainly. There's Rachel. Hi. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hello, strangers. We're in. We've we've called us to order. I've heard it all. I just oh, didn't good, good. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, you you were there in more than spirit. Great. Um, so, uh, Rob, are you suggesting beyond names, or does everyone want to hear my long biography, or what? What are you actually I, talking maybe a about? Short here, bio, and, you know. I'd like to hear your bio. Well, I was born in a small town. No, um, I, I live in Randolph. I've been on the board for probably, uh, I don't know, 07, 08. Um, grew up in St. Jay, went away, came back. Plenty else to say, but really, we got business to do. You really want everyone to do a little something? A yeah. three sentence maximum? I think I did three sentences. <laughs> Who wants it? I'll, I'll go and just say, uh, Chad, I'm Rob Chapman. I'm the director at Orca. I am not officially a board member, but I am staff. I have been working in community media. I think I'm starting my fourth decade here. I have worked for most of it in Burlington. I have been at Orca for the past 10 years. I uh, had a brief stint in mm -hmm. California and uh, outside of uh, Pasadena, a place called Monrovia. Uh, and am happy to be here. You want to hand it off? 
I, I got Dave next on my screen. All right. Uh, Chad, I'm um, retired from everything. I was the director of the Moyle Family Center in Morrisville. I was the associate pastor at the old meeting house up here. And uh, so I've um, retired from uh, those jobs. And, um, and my, my, my biggest role in life seems to be uh, being a post-retirement work that's similar to what I did while I was still being paid. Uh, giving people rides to places and uh, standing out in front of the post office with signs against war and other things. And so I'm kind of a useless at this point, uh, sack of retirement. Welcome. <laughs> Sounds pretty useful. <laughs> and Dave, you could do the handoff. Uh, Sue, let's go with you. Okay. Um, I'm Sue Bettman. I live in Middlesex. Uh, I've been an ORCA board member for a few years. Uh, I'm also a camera operator and sometime uh, video editor at, at ORCA. Um, I have done some documentary filmmaking over the last 20 years. Uh, before that, I worked with the Bread and Puppet Theater on and off for many years. Up, up in Glover, but in also in New York City and at Goddard in Plainfield. Um, let's see, how about Carlos? Well, I'm Carlos Diaz, Chad, and I, we've met before. Um, mm -hmm. So um, Carlos Diaz, um, I used to be a cinematographer. Um, I worked with Orca Media as a production coordinator. But before that, you know, since the 90s, I've been a cinematographer and now I teach filmmaking. Where are you doing and, that, Carlos? Oh, I'm teaching it. I'm, I'm at um, CBCC, which is Barry. Um, it's a technical center in Barry. I've been teaching there for a while. Before that, I was at Randolph teaching um, filmmaking also. Yeah. Great. And I okay. think last but not least is Rachel. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, I'm Rachel Feldman. I've been on the ORCA board for, gosh, I, Rob, you fill in the amount of time. <laughs> oh, it was seven or eight years. Yeah, something like that. Um, so I work for the Department of Corrections. I'm the principal assistant to the commissioner and the public information officer. Uh, I've spent a bunch of time in Vermont politics and um, I just really love this board and that's why I can't leave. I've been on a hiatus because I've been teaching at Champlain. So it's really good to see everybody again and it's really nice to meet you. Nice to meet all of you. So I, I'll just queue up um, chat. Chad is here. Um, I started with a conversation with uh, Christopher, our new community engagement engagement manager. And I mentioned to him that uh, we do have an, uh, two positions that are available for the board. So if in his community engagement, he met anybody that he thought might be appropriate for the board, you could speak to them about po the possibility. And he thought of Chad and Chad uh, immediately reached out to me and said he was interested. And so Chad, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Um, I had, we, I moved to Vermont in 2018. Um, before that I was in Boston. I've been um, working in some facet of television production since 2001. So 20 years. Um, I've been for the last 10 years <laughs> editing documentary films for national broadcast on a lot of PBS um, and uh, film festival, that sort of stuff, independent documentaries. Um, I was the lead film editor for the series Frontline on PBS for uh, four years before moving oh. here. So a lot of, uh, it was a, a decent amount of television, <laughs> but we moved here uh, to Montpelier and um, uh, my wife and I run a production company here and I still edit films for people all over the country. And also we film things for different clients around Vermont and wherever else. Um, but moving here, I've gotten to actually get out of the edit room for the first time in like 10 years, which is great. 
the use of camera again. And um, we've started just recently a, it's incorporated, but the process of becoming a nonprofit is the ball is rolling on that, a group for um, networking for the film industry in Vermont, statewide group called the Vermont Production Collective. Um, in an effort to create a space for people to network and collaborate. And phase two will then be to plug in learning opportunities for people who are either switching to the field or just graduate and um, connecting them with some smaller budget projects with the opportunity to do work and get um, do real work and get real feedback and and be uh, hopefully a mentor uh, connected with each thing so that you can get um, guidance. Um, but I could go on about have entire Zoom conversations about that. So I don't wanna go down that hole, but <laughs> so I, that, if that's, I think a rough a sense of, of, of what I do. And through doing the work with the Production Collective, I was talking with Chris and um, we were getting all fired up about different things and uh, how ORCA could be involved and a role in, in helping create education opportunities for people in the community and all of that sort of stuff. And, um, and so he was like, hey, you should join the ORCA board. We have two spots open. And I was like, hey, all right. Uh, I live a block away. It's convenient for Proximity and obviously I uh, have a little bit of knowledge in this area. Oh, great, thanks for uh, visiting us virtually, Chad. It sounds like you wouldn't have much trouble to get there live either, but it looks like we're back to 100% virtual meeting. It's been a while, um, it's been quite a year. Um, Chad, it's, if you wanna stick around and, and get a flavor for what a board meeting's like, um, you certainly are welcome, or you can do the audio sign off, sayonara. It's uh, your call at this point. Okay. Uh, I'll probably stick around, but I may have to jump because I have a, a young kid who, who needs to be wrangled into bed at some point here. Totally understood. Um, it does look like you'll, you'll be here for one of the more exciting portions of the evening, which is approval of the minutes, October 19th, 2021. <laughs> Uh, it's the second item in your board packet. If we could all just take a minute. Uh, thanks so much to Carlos for uh, putting this together, uh, representing the decisions we made uh, in the fall. I would say, can we go quiet for a couple, three, and just scan this for accuracy and uh, grammar and typos in the works, I guess. Um, uh, everyone should have their board packet. If you search for Rob in your email, it should be one of the top ones. And it's uh, it's a little off kilter. My pages are a little off, but it's definitely the second item. It's kind of starting on the bottom of the first page, October 19, 2021. All right, I'm going quiet. Um, I've, I've hit the bottom of that page and I didn't see anything to fix. I got an ad for thyroid eye disease. Okay. 
You can ignore no, it. That's all I have is thyroid eye disease. You're not seeing your packet, Dave? I don't see any packet at all. I went over to the sidebar to see with some over there, and that's how I got the uh, important information and updates about thyroid eye disease. <laughs> Let me see if I can mail it to you right now and see. And or you could you could trust uh, your fellow board members to have Professor Stan or scan this I'm, I'm, like I, eagles. I just want to get rid of the eye woman. She's staring at me, and. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I don't know if I push the X, if I'll lose you all, but I'm going to try to X her out. Oh, good. She went away. Yeah. If you, you can always come back if there's a problem. Other, you can say some people always could come back. They always can find a way not to get back. <laughs> Dave, you've been, you've been holding for a solid, what, 10 minutes here. Um, <laughs> does anyone see any uh, amendments to the minutes from October 19th? Uh, just a clarifying question. Since I wasn't at the meeting, I feel like I should abstain from the vote. Uh, fair enough. So just okay. so you know, uh, Rachel, I have researched that. You can abstain if you feel like it, but you don't have to. Oh, all right. Well, then I won't abstain, but I do have one thing I'd like to edit because I'm OCD about copy edits like that. Under Section 5, the financial reports, we are doing well, not we are doing good. All right, there's a, 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 a grammatical Sorry. amendment. And yes, you even though you weren't there, you're welcome to note those. Um, might be a continuity error or whatever, whatever it might be. Well, I think actually we do good. Yes, um, we do so good. good, good is the verb that well. down there. Orca does good well. We do good and we do it well. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the edit. It's my job. Um, any other uh, cleanups here? Or I could entertain a motion to approve the minutes of October 19th. I'm going to yeah. move to pro approve. No, second. I heard... Carlos moved to approve the minutes and Sue second. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I got a little weird uh, lag on the video there for a sec. Um, uh, barring further discussion, dot, 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 I will call the question. All those in favor of approving the minutes of October 19th, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed would be a nay. And it sounds like we have a, a unanimous approval of these minutes. October 19th. Um, we are now moving on to the financial reports, usually uh, headed up by our treasurer, um, Mike D, Mike Doyle. And um, uh, Robert, are, do, is, are we worried about Mike health concerns or you just couldn't make it? Just the holiday season. He's fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good to hear. Um, um, so a note, uh, Dave. I did re-email re the packet to the to the Prof Stanton at AOL email. Okay. So if you want to check it, it should be right at the top of the inbox. Okay. I'll uh, I'm, I'll wait till Prof Stanton get, gets home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, Rob, can you? Can you post, Rob, can you post those numbers on the yep. chat? Thank you. Get those for you. So yeah, Rob, them. it looks like you're going to be our, you know, our lead off cleanup. Yep. And so, the nine hitter tonight. Uh, take message here. PayPal account is at 3,049 and 14 cents. Um, checking is at... Fourteen thousand five hundred and thirty-five and seventy-five cents in savings. We have two hundred eight thousand six nine five and ninety-one cents. And in the youth lab account, we are currently at twelve thousand three hundred and forty-seven dollars and eighty-five cents. So they should all be in the chat for you, Carlos. 
And thank ready. you. Yep. All right. Um, so financial report. There is a. Oh, I have it virtually here. The profit and loss for budget versus comparison for the year is was in your board packet. Uh, not seeing anything that I feel is particularly disturbing. In fact, I think we're in good shape and uh, I've saved quite a lot of money. Excuse me. I'm looking at the budget. I know, uh, and I know we're, we're probably going to move into the budget discussion fairly quickly here. But I've been looking at a, a deficit budget pulling for some of the reserve. So I will note that I was trying to figure out, you know, there was a time in think in 2018 where uh, we got really thin on cash uh, as we ended the quarter before the checks come from Comcast. Um, and I think at one point we even did have to pull $10,000 to cover expenses for uh, the end of that time. But since we've cut some costs and uh, uh, moved up here as well as uh, reducing our staff level. We are looking at, you know, typically before when we get the check, we have over a hundred thousand and up to 150,000 left in the, in the account uh, when we get to that point. So we're very comfortable. Uh, and when we get to the budget discussion, I think that, you know, I feel that we could even go uh, a year or a year maybe before we even get into the reserves based on just the cash that we have in the savings account. So um, the other thing that I did want to note on your agenda, we did have set up a presentation from our new Ed Jones representative, uh, um, Mark, uh, I forget his last name, but I've been meeting with him regularly to talk about the the, the package um, and the, the portfolio. Uh, he did want an opportunity to talk to you guys, but he, he's gonna be here. He said, let's move it to the February since he can't, it was a tough time for him, he's moving his family, he does live, live, live here locally, but they were in the middle of moving to a new place. Uh, and so he uh, asked if it would be okay if he uh, comes to visit the board in the, at the February meeting. So that, um, Mark will not be here tonight. So um, I, yeah, I don't think that there's anything in particular I wanted to point out. And, in, in, you know, like I said, uh, if you look at it, you know, the, the side that, you know, I kind of look at, at the uh, right is whether or not we're at, uh, you know, we're almost finished with the year. So these numbers should be approaching 100%. There are a couple places where it is. One of the more significant ones is in the unemployment taxes. And I believe that's because we were paying out unemployment and there's a mechanism for unemployment where you can choose to pay into it regularly or you can use to pay out when people actually go on unemployment. And since we did have people go on unemployment and we hadn't really had that before, we were not paying regularly into unemployment we were just doing it as needed basis and it did come up that it was needed in 2021 for the people who were not getting the, that is basically the part-time camera operators who uh, were uh, going on unemployment because they were not getting any, uh, any more uh, shifts or um, gigs to go out and shoot because, we're, because of the virtual meetings. So that's right. why. Here, yeah. The best follow along document for us to be looking at right now is budgets versus actual 2021 Yep. With the 2022 uh, budget proposed and the far margin. Uh, nope, I'm sorry. The best one is in your packet, budgets versus actual. Okay. Right past my director's report. Yeah, so my version got all squished and non-formatted. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You want me to try to send another one to you? No, I mean, I think the numbers should be the same as on the... Uh... Yeah, there may be some variances based on when I actually um, ran the report, but there should, the variance should be, should, very, should be insignificant. Right. So what you hope to be doing now is directing us to the, the year in review and then moving us into the proposed. Is yes, that correct? That's correct. And if, you're, if there are no questions on the budget versus actual, we can go to the budget proposal. Can I ask a sidebar question sort of for Mike Doyle? Yeah. Which is, is there a limit on uh, how much money we can show in the profit category without risking loss of a 401c3 status? Is there, a, no. Okay. I think, I just, since we're nonprofit, I just wondered whether there was a place where we start looking like we aren't. 
not as far as the IRS is concerned, uh, the, the state of Vermont and maybe Comcast would be the places we'd want to, we're worried about. And as I think I've mentioned in the past, the state of Vermont feels that an appropriate reserve, which is um, funds that are not earmarked for a particular project, or uh, you know, if you're raising money for it to move, that would not be considered a, a cash reserve or a reserve fund, but that an appropriate uh, reserve fund is in the vicinity of uh, half a year's operating. Thank you. You know, place, places like Blue Cross Blue Shield are nonprofits. They they can make money. <laughs> I have to laugh. Good one. Yeah. Point made. Um, so, Rob, we're showing a budget for 2021 that is at 115 percent. Is that what the uh, other doc shows? I'm sorry, can you tell? I don't, I'm not understanding the question. Um, when, oh. when I'm the document I'm looking at is yep. actual budget and over budget $62,000, which is 115% of budgeted, correct? Yeah. So, uh, yep. Yeah. So there's a little bit more in there, and that has to do with the capital gains, which were typically not included in the budget, that 29,062. So I had the, the accountant go through and do what we made on the Ed Jones account in the year. So we have typically not included that in the budget. So that's money that typically comes in that doesn't get put into the budget, which is a change for this year because I've actually put that money into the budget that we would be able to expect to spend $30,000 on that reserve fund increase, the, the, the profit that we get on that reserve fund. Does that make sense? Uh... I think you may have lost me, but maybe, okay. maybe someone understands. So uh, on the budget side, you'll see what we budgeted for, and then we made extra money in if other areas. So we didn't budget for the youth documentary lab, but we brought money in, Christopher brought money in for that. So that's uh, another $13,000 on top of what we budgeted for income. And then the capital gains is also not in the budget. So we didn't have any money for budgeted for it. The two hundred seventy dollars for donation, but because of those extra money that came in and, and the uh, it, including the the eighteen hundred at the bottom, which is the COVID relief fund that we got at the beginning of the year, this is all extra money that we got that we did not budget for. So you know, I have never included the money that we make on the reserve fund in the budget. So that's why you're seeing those numbers say that we made significantly more. So we did make. 15% more than we actually had budgeted for. Got it. I think I'm all right. Okay. Does everyone feel comfortable with what Rob just walked us through? Yes. They want me to go a little bit into the budget and what I, what I was planning or thinking about with those numbers? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, places you want to highlight under expenses as well as we do our year in review? Yeah, so uh, on the income side, as I said, there's $30,000 included in that income that I've not included in the, in the past because it's, it's the reserve fund profit that you make, you know, the, depending on the market. So we made 29,000. So in this 2022 budget, I did include $30,000 that we could use from yeah. that reserve fund as part of our operating. Uh, and so we come up with $475,000 operating budget, including that extra money. Uh, and then this is all to sort of um, address some um, compensation for staff. You know, there's been some talk, as some of you know, about staff compensation is it's not a lot is there a way to increase it so i'm looking for ways to do that uh and so there's a significant increase uh in the compensation uh which is category 5010 we had budgeted two hundred sixteen thousand dollars. we didn't come we only spent about eighty thousand we'll probably be at around 80 a little higher than 80 percent which means that we, you know, we saved, and it's a significant number. So percentages on this particular category can be a lot of money. We didn't spend, uh, you know, probably 
40,000, a little bit more under budget. Uh, and then I added on top of that, a significant amount. This is all in large to add a fourth full-time person, which we've done with uh, Christopher. Uh, and then some of the things that fall below that have to be increased too, which is the FICA, the unemployment taxes, all these things are sort of tied to the, the benefits package that comes with the staff. And uh, even with that, I still put us in with a, a, a $30,000 deficit. So we can expect, if we made $30,000 on our, our reserve fund last year, we can expect somewhere in that vicinity for next year, as, as well as to draw down some of that. So at the bottom of the budget, it may say negative $30,000 deficit on the, on the budget, but it really is more of a $60,000 uh, deficit because we've never typically drawn from the reserve funds. We've just let that sit and get bigger and bigger. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah. So those are the primary, uh, you know, the rest of the numbers are generally based on the actuals from the prior year. I just take, you know, how close were we were on something and then sort of uh, match those numbers. I did increase a little bit on outreach and advertising. Uh, this would be to help in some of the community engagement outreach stuff that Christopher is planning. So we, you know, we, let's spend some advertising. Let's get that, you know, get our name out there a little bit more. So there's an increase in that budget as well. But in general, I, I would say that even though this is a deficit budget, the idea is that, you know, after a few years, Christopher will be able to be bringing in some funds, you know, with some development and some uh, fundraising. So I think I'm comfortable with saying that this could go for a couple of years with the deficit and not adversely impact our reserve funds. You know, when we get to around two hundred thousand dollars in our reserve funds, then that's when we start thinking, all right, we've got to we've got to stop that. But I think you know we've been very comfortable, comfortably saving monies for a few years now that we have some reserve funds that we could draw down from. Um, Rob, how'd you come up with that number of seven thousand on the uh, sixty one hundred line used for uh, documentary lab? Given that it was thirteen this year. So, I mean, the 13 came from funds from the grant. So I didn't think that we could count on that. So I was like, all right, let's say, you know, 7,000 uh, that we can pull from. If additional money is raised, then we can bring that up. So what that would be, what I feel comfortable from Orca's co contribution, uh, it's just saying that Orca's, you know, we'll put $7,000 in of our own money, um, but additional on top of that would be money that is brought in through the program. So you're you're talking a bit like it it remains a separate entity even though the person that ran it is now on staff. So um, just a particular line item saying you know uh, you know when we first envisioned it last year I said you know I I can expect the budget to be about five grand and I, I think that you know up a little bit seven grand is Orca's contribution but if you go out and get a grant above on top of that then we can certainly expand or at least get to a level that we had in the prior year. That's the hope is that you know this this is there's money in youth programming so christopher would go out and get and say you know i've got i've got seven grand that that rob budgeted and now i've i've gone out and raised an additional 10 grand so then we're at at, at 17. but i haven't put that in I, uh, what did i put in for bringing in youth, youth documentary lab you know five thousand dollars um i want to be conservative it's a new program i don't want to say that we're you know we're there but uh it was pretty successful and we may get to adjust those numbers as we see additional grants might come in so and and now that chris is on staff his salary doesn't become a separate expense um other things catching people's eyes or questions for rob concerning the budget either 2021 or proposed Um, I, I, well, I think we're going to, with the director's report, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to bring the budget up for the employees there, right? So do they understand where that's coming from versus, I mean, this year and last year in terms of that extra money that came in from, um, from the federal government, it's not going to happen again or might not happen again for a while. So um I think to be clear of where the money the money's coming from and how it's tagged, I think everybody should be clear on that. 
that's just my comment. Thanks, Carlos. Um, Rob, do you hope to have a full, robust budget conversation now, or are there pieces in the executive director's report that? I had it on as an agenda item for now. So okay, I mean great. And I think that, you know, sort of the question I have for the board is, are they comfortable with this with this deficit budget as I presented? Uh, if there, or if there are adjustments, they think it's a little bit too much that, you know, we're really looking at, you know, augmenting our, you know, our budget with $60,000 worth of uh, reserve funds and cash that we have. So you're proposing a budget of uh, half a million dollars. Yep. 505. And the big jumps are compensation. With a bit of an increase in, in outreach and advertising. Yeah, and compensation pulls up all those other line items like health insurance and unemployment, right? Yep. So 2021 looked like a, a $62,000 revenue more than expected, correct? Yeah. And that gives us the comfort level With the also pulling from reserves, you know, I don't want to, to take away from that. There is there is an expectation that we will go into our reserves, and but as I said, I think we can cover it with just our cash before we actually get to the Ed Jones account. That might be a twenty twenty three, but the Ed Jones account is doing very well. But who knows? It's, there, a, it's a market thing. Is there a projection? Um, have you talked about with? Um with the staff about projections in terms of advertisement and the possibility of generating, of bringing income in terms of grant and other, and other areas? I, I, I lost the, the first part of that, Carlos. Can you say it again? You know, it, is there a projection with Chris? Have you talked to him? All right, so we're gonna invest this much. Um, what are, you know, ideally um, at minimum, what do you expect to get back? From his, his fundraising work? Yes. Yep. Yeah, I think that, that as Michael pointed out, this, the 7,000 to, I, it's, you know, would be, I'm looking at the 7 to 10 range for the, the program, for the youth program. But that's money that we've, I'm a little wary of it because it was, it was fairly easy picking for the year with the after school program. But, you know, I do have some confidence in, in Christopher's skills. And I think that there is money for youth programming. And I will add that there is uh, work on behalf of access centers across the state with the Vermont Access Net Network, where they are preparing to go to the legislature for an ask. And I've been working uh, on, with the Van Advocacy Group, and they are working to ask for a uh, budget adjustment for $300,000 to be dispersed among the access centers across the state in 2022 budget. And then in the 2023 fiscal year, a $600,000 budget. Um, so Vance working on, on, on bringing additional funding from the legislature as well. Um, I think that ORCA is well positioned because we do a lot of statewide programming for the, for the state. Uh, yes. in fact, yeah. I was, uh, tasked with talking to representative Mary Hooper on the appropriations committee, uh, kind of like spent 20 minutes with her about the ask and, and whether, I mean, she chairs the, the house appropriations committee. Um, she was very, um, knowledgeable about what we do and at the end of our conversation brought up the orca's presence in the state house and uh said that she assumed that we were getting paid to do that and i had to inform her that that's not the case we have no contract yes. with the state house Absolutely. we are doing it out of our own budget so uh she was surprised to hear that so i think that there's some real opportunity to uh to provide <laughs> services from the state house from from for, for van and um so I, there's uh, work. I guess I'm saying that there's 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 potential for additional incoming coming in from from this legislator if there is appropriation. Yep. 
and there's a lot of education work <laughs> here with this. I, I, I think in terms of you know how we interface with government. Yeah. And uh, Christopher is working. You know, he's right now working with Potsdam School, which is next door to us. Uh, and we did get uh, get to an agreement of some shared uh, costs. So they will be paying us in some of the schools. So he's being very conscious of the fact that when he goes out to these schools or other youth organizations um, to ask for money. So, okay. I so the know. last thing I want, yeah, the last thing I'm going to ask is, and I don't know if it belongs here, but um, do you foresee any major expenditure in terms of gear, like something that costs a lot, just breaking down or upgrading that's going to cost a lot? I, I don't have anything that, that I foresee happening with that. Um, the question of the uh, players playout server is there. Um, you know, we um, have been, uh, we pay quite a bit of money a year to the tune of like $7,000 for maintenance and support with Telview, which, which is the vendor that, that um, manufactures the server. They, uh, came back to us for the first time uh, and said, you know, it might be time to upgrade your server, Rob. And uh, of course there, he's a salesman and I'm like, well, I think huh. our server's working just fine. And, you know, we just paid off that last one. I don't want to go in for another, uh, you know, $60,000 purchase at this point. Um, so I, I don't know that, that, that there's any problems. I'm not aware of any problems with the server. It seems to be functioning well. Uh, you know, I think uh, Jin has uh, some, so, um, Concerns with the sluggishness, but I think that's an application problem in her work. When she tries to update her schedule, on it can take up to 30 seconds for it to refresh. So, but I don't think that's a hardware problem. I think that's just a, an application problem. So, so I guess the answer, Carlos, says no. I don't expect any large purchases at this point. Not 20, okay. not 2022. And then um, just nailing down some of our revenue um that 365 that's four quarterly checks in the low 90s is that 4010 very first number yep that's four quarterly checks yeah and they're and they're where are they where are they lately high 90s mid 90s low 90s um below 100 right they've dropped so I don't, let me just do a quick calculation because the check usually comes in and combining the capital and the operating revenue. So if we're- Yeah, and the capital was my next question as well. That's 66, how, how nailed down is that? Or is that guesstimation? Uh, so plus, so I think the check is generally around 110 if you include the operating and the capital. Uh huh. So yeah, but you're right. I mean, if you divide the 364 by four payments, it's going to be- it's about just uh, just high uh, just upwards of ninety thousand dollars. So uh, you're actually saying it makes sense to add the uh, the two line items. Yeah, and then exactly. see what a quarterly check ought to look like. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the check comes as one as the combination of the two things, and then I I break it out when I do it into the accounting. I'll say you know how much of that was operating and how much of that was capital. Yeah. So I just got one hundred seven thousand. Yeah. That's uh, our, our we've flatlined. We trended up. We've trended down. Where are we now? I would characterize it as flatline. You know, it's pretty steady flatline. You know, so we're we're seeing little variances, but not not significant. Uh, and that's you know, I think in some of the numbers that Van has been preparing, I think we were like one of the the closest to to zero. I mean, there are some centers that are going up. There are about nine that are going down. So there's statewide monitoring going on of Yeah, because we're, you know, in this ask to the state house, they right. want the data to back it up. And so we were trying to present this idea that uh, revenue from cable is going down. And then when we added, came up with the number, we also contemplated, you know, cost of living increases are at, at 3% and cost of running what we do, particularly in, in the last two years where we've had to adapt our working template to include hybrid meetings. That there are additional costs associated with it so we contemplated three percent increase on a year basis and a, a two two percent decline in cable revenue for the next i think we went five years out and this is the this is the data that we're showing to legislators as we look at you know 
you know, this is this is the future. And we, you know, uh, and just to explain a little bit, the van uh, ask is for this sort of bridge uh, for three years. So each year we, we've come up with a number, but that that gives us the opportunity to adjust policy to try to look at the sustainability past that three years. So it's like, you know, for three years, we're asking for bridge gapping until we can get to an idea how we can find other revenue that would support the work that we do. Um, you know, what that might be, whether that's a tax on streaming services or a poll tax, uh, we don't know how that's gonna look and it's gonna take some time to figure that out. So the asks now is, you know, came about from uh, discussions with the Department of Public Service where they looked at the, uh, the report that I gave you guys probably a year, year and a half ago that was prepared by Peter Blum, uh, looking at different ways and, and the difficulties with it. Uh, and the department was like, all of it sounds illegal to us. Just go to the legislature and ask. So uh, that's what we're doing. Bob? Yeah, Dave. Does, um, does any, do the other van organizations have someone doing similar jobs to what Chris is doing? Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. In fact, I, you know, I looked at what the media factor in Burlington has a community engagement manager uh, by the name of Jen Ferrara. So she, you know, I, I asked for her job description when I was looking at the position uh, and I'm not aware of anybody else in Vermont, but there are some in Massachusetts as well that have that exact title. But there are certainly people that are, that are you know, looking at, you know, doing similar duties. Thank you. Um, um, other questions or comments? Yes, who's up? Yeah, um, yeah. there are a couple of things. Uh, one is what's the difference between outreach and advertising? So advertising would actually be um, print ads. Uh, advertising would be social media. Um, outreach is more, uh, you know, we, I think I put all of the, uh, the costs for the program, interactive programming guide and outreach. Outreach is just a, um, things that I don't classify as sort of specifically towards advertising. It'd be like, you know, if we had um, an event that was designed to get people into the space or something like that, that might go under outreach. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, for capital expenses and VYDL equipment, could you explain what those things are? Uh, under expenses, yeah. So VYDL is Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. Oh, okay. So that's the, the, the youth programming that we did. Yep. And capital expenses? Equipment bought for the for the so uh, for VYDL or a general, Susan? No, just for uh, just the capital expenses, not VYDL. Uh, capital expenses is equipment. Yep, okay. Uh, and we actually include rent in, in our capital expenditures. So we, you know, uh, 70, 70 C is rent. Mm -hmm. So, which and that's, these are funds that are sort of limited that come from the cable company that is supposed to be spent on equipment. And we did have a large discussion with them in our contract negotiations 10 years ago about whether or not rent can be included in the capital budget. Uh, in yeah. general accounting practices, uh, capital would generally be fixed assets. So that's not even like maintenance or uh, tech supplies, but there is no requirement for, for us with limitations as regard to capital expenses, other than what Comcast or the state might say. So, you know, we argued that, you know, if you're paying for a support or maintenance uh, agreement on a piece of equipment, that would be in support of that capital fixed asset. Uh, so there's not a direct correlation between uh, fixed assets and capital that might generally be done in a general accounting practices. Um, but so we have a little bit of leeway in what we classify as the capital expense, but it mm -hmm. generally is in support of um, the equipment. And the argument was, about the rent was, you know, people who actually purchase uh, facilities, you know, like a building, they can capitalize that money, but people who rent, they were saying you can't because it's not actually purchasing anything. Um, but we argued for a couple of years about the fact that, it, you know, the rent that we're paying houses the equipment. So uh, they finally gave up and said, fine, you can, you can call it, it, you can call the rent capital if that's, if that, if that's what you want to do. Thanks. To the, the, the discussion about advertising and outreach, um, it seems to me that a lot of times what happens in the community depends upon how you label what it is that you're doing and providing. 
So if there's been a, a deficit in the after school programs, we might be able to spin Chris's job into filling that gap here in the Montpelier area. Namely that a lot of it has to happen after school and, and therefore becomes de facto part of an after school opportunity. I just, I was just wondering whether we could think sometimes about when some services are lost, what part of those can be replaced or still undergirded by ORCA? Okay, yeah. I don't know that I have any, I mean- I'd Okay, it was just, it was just, a, I was responding to the question of what is outreach and what is advertising. Thank you. And I think they're both the same thing in a lot of ways. Very similar for sure. But I, you know, and it, they could probably be combined into one category, but you know, when, as I'm, as I'm allocating expenditures to a particular item, that's sort of the delineation that I made was advertising would be, we pay for an ad. So that seems to be very clear. Um, I also think another, one, one is services and the other one is not, right? Yep. Thanks, Carlos. Just uh, and, uh, picking up on another uh, area, Sue underlined, Rob, on your 2022 budget, you just drop uh, 68 grand down on capital expenses um, without line iting, iteming rent versus maintenance versus tech versus. So I'm just wondering how you came up with that 68,000, uh, which is up pretty, up from 55. Is that right? Yeah. So um, generally, what I do is just pull the number down from the capital revenue we get from cable. Which I see that I, I you know, if you go up to the top, capital revenue. I budgeted 66,000 and then some, I got to 68 down there. So I may have been looking for, um, if we're gonna go the deficit, you know, maybe we could boost up the capital a little bit. So the revenue, and it's only $2,000, so it's not gonna be a lot, but it's, uh, that's generally where I pull the number from. And that, you know, I, uh, I, yeah, I haven't typically pulled it out into the different subsections of capital expenditures. Um, uh, I think the one place that we, I probably could do that, which is a pretty fixed number is the rent. Um, but as you, you're correct, I did not do that, so. So if if we just see this through, that 62,000 from 2021 was just an expected amount of capital money you'll have to play with. Yep. Right? Matches directly to the, the income side, the 40410C capital. And it shook out to be 55.4 last year. Uh, actually, you mean? Yes. 65, six. Where am I not seeing that? On the, you're at the top of the, oh, you're talking about the expenditures. Yes. Oh yeah. And that's not done. We're, we're actually, you know, Fran, um, spending, <clears throat> doing our last end of year. Okay. Practice, so that'll so probably I, come in pretty close. Yeah. So I, you know, typically in the year I say, tell my staff, this is how much we have left over in the capital budget what would do we want to spend the last things on that we get to that? So I try to, to zero out the capital. Got it. All right. All right. So I think, you know, in all my years, this is the first sort of uh, deficit budget presented. Um, and there are these, you know, there's, there's all these kind of reasons and uh, why it does not look like it's a nail biter, but um, uh I guess I'll just, you know, I don't know if it's an elephant in the room or not, but do people, how are people's comfort level with, uh, you know, any deficit hawks out there? All right, it's quiet, Rob. You might get away with this. Are you I, looking no. for an actual approval of the budget this evening? All right, so the I thought so, and that's why I wanted to just say, Hey guys. Yeah. And, I, and um, I'll say that I've typically been the deficit budget. I've, you know, I've been very conservative in my budgets. So it's a little, I won't say it's outside my comfort zone, but it's, it's challenge, you know, for me to say, all right, we're actually in a position where I, I feel comfortable doing this, which is, which is unique for me or different for me. You know, I tend to like to see our numbers come in uh, that, we, you know, we made more money than we've spent. And so that, you know, that we're not scrambling for cash. Um, but I think I'm, I'm looking at these numbers. I'm very comfortable with, with where we're at and, and it, it, 
a lot of it has to do with the past few years and how well we've been um, uh, saving money. So, Mike Doyle hasn't objected either, right? Not at all. Oh, that's a really good point. He's seen these. He's seen this proposal. Yeah, he's his suggestion was that we just draw from the reserve fund two thousand dollars a month, and so you know he's looking at mechanisms to have to, have to do it, so he, he doesn't have a problem with it. And, and I think he's, he expressed that in, in one of the board meetings prior. I think maybe the October one. And in many ways, you're presenting kind of a worst case scenario in terms of some of the, you know, that 68, we may not, we may have some play there. Um, I think, so Mike, I, go ahead. what I think is, you know, I think one of the questions we should be asking is what, one of the questions we should be asking is why does why do you Rob feel comfortable with this number now when you haven't before? I think that's an important question to answer. Yep. And and in in relation to where we're at right now in terms of um, of the two year pandemic, you know, and and and, and economy, right? Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, I I'd answer that you know I. I, as I said, have typically liked to be conservative in my projections um, and uh, would normally budget based on numbers that I saw the prior year. So if I saw a certain amount come in from the cable money, um, that's what the number I would use. And then typically we'd see two, two or three percent on top of that. That's not the case now. But through that work in the past years, we've been able to put some money aside. So I think that. Um, we're um, well positioned to be able to, to, to tolerate a deficit budget. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that I would want to get into the habit of doing it, but I think that, you know, at this point, uh, um, I'm really comfortable with it. And I think that there is some value to trying to figure out, we have a little bit of money in the reserve, what's the best way to do it? I think, you know, getting somebody who's going to be bringing in money for us through some, um, some, through some development is a good place to do it. And that community engagement manager position is really where we're going to be doing some of that, as well as getting out in the community and getting our name out there. So, and I will say that my understanding yeah, from and Mike, I, and I, I, I agree. I agree with you. Thanks, Carlos. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, Rachel, you got it. Um, my understanding from Mike, as well as the way that we've been managing the accounts is that this is exactly the reason that we've been so conservative in our spending and in our saving, um, not to belabor the term, but for a rainy day, anticipating the thing that can't be expected, i.e. COVID. So we've really made a concerted effort to build our reserves but not just to have that money to sit on, but in anticipation of the unknown happening. I just don't think we expected it to happen so soon. But that being said, I feel really comfortable where we are financially that we can do this. So my two cents Great. on, I guess, kind of intended. Thank you. Um, I mean, we could um entertain a motion to accept the 2022 proposed budget or we could keep chatting um i think i think uh carlos put it quite well that there are there are some moving parts here that make you kind of back in your comfort zone i don't know rob could you kind of itemize like what are the things within hey. this budget that make so like just say, hey, this is I'm not I'm not worried. I'm actually not worried because X, Y, and Z. So, Mike, uh, can I can I interject? I agree with Please. Rachel absolutely. I inter I agree with you, Rachel. At the same time, I, I also, I mean, I think we should not. I don't expect tonight for Rob to answer the question right now in the, in the next five minutes and say, okay, we're ready to do this. I think what would be prudent and great is that if um, Chris, if they could sit down and kind of um, create a document on what are, what's going to happen with this, with this budget, where are we going with this? Because it's it's a movement forward in a different direction, and I would like to see that crystallize on paper. Also, I guess Does that makes sense. A, yeah. Well, I I mean I think if 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 there is the building of um, sort of an an outreach fundraising model with the goal of us not 
having to um, look at a deficit budget for next year. I mean, that would kind of like, I mean, this is sort of, uh, this isn't the new normal in terms of expect to go into reserves every year is, 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 is safe to say. I, I would say that I, I had two years in mind. Two. Okay. Yep. All right. So, so Carlos is sort of request for the, there be the building of a, uh, model isn't the right word. Proposal isn't the right word strategic plan is the right word someone help those two years are going to be uh used in some fashion to expand our uh footprint budget planning projection sure love it i love it there we go you know i i think that I think there's an opportunity and maybe it's overdue for us to really give some ideas to strategic planning. Uh, and I think there's um, some some, um, some talk with among staff about that there would be a benefit to that. Um, but I think that that's a process that takes a while. So I, you know, I think that what I would counsel is that we move forward with this budget with the idea that we're going to spend some time uh, in 2022 uh, working on strategic long-term planning, you know, uh, with the staff and with the board and get to a, a point, you know, that's why I, I really was looking at the two years because, you know, I think that we have about 100000 to $120,000 to play with. So the, the 60000 is for this first year. Uh, and then we could spend some time in 2022 really trying to nail down uh, strategic planning, development, uh, fundraising um, goals. Uh, so that's, you know, I, I, I guess I'm aware of the fact that we are a few days away from 2022. So, um, yeah, in terms of strategic planning, I'd hope to be able to discuss the idea of um, figuring out some fundraising that would be specifically targeted to increasing staff uh, wages. Absolutely. And so we, I mean, those conversations have already begun with Christopher. Uh, he's looking at what other stations are doing for year end uh, raising, you know, asks, um, that, you know, we, and we've, he's looking at some of the training that, we, that it can be done with the grantsmanship center, some of the programs that are available uh, and some of the knowledge that I've, you know, I've acquired over the years with regard to that. So uh, Dave, I think you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we've talked before about having a, a board group just do strategic planning. We never quite got to being able to do it because while we have these talks, I, my mind immediately goes to strategic planning. I was looking at Rachel's uh, description of her work and I was saying, oh, well, what would happen if we use that connection with corrections, with connections, with corrections <laughs> to, to think about possibly running some of Christopher's trainings for people that need to be re-entering the community from corrections. That's a strategic planning thing that would also possibly free up some funds to support that. Anyway, I'd like to see us go with strategic right. planning sometimes. There's a lot of potential directions. Is it possible, Michael, um, Michael to, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to vote on this like this as is right now. Is it possible to have at least at some point, maybe in the next week or so, have at least a timeline of, of okay, this planning by this by this step, we're gonna hit this milestone. So there's an accountability and there's a process that we're following so that by the end of, I don't know, by summer we have this, if that makes sense. You mean uh, to stipulate in the approval of this budget, a a timeline for um, building a strategic plan that well, yeah, yeah, at least part of it. to I mean, a place where we aren't doing multiple years of, of de deficit budgeting. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. That that's that. I mean, that could become a motion. I would imagine. I imagine Rob is hoping for a, a clean a clean vote, but uh, 
a stipulation like that may be the uh, may be the way in. Um, if I accurately represented what you were saying, Carlos. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I think you hit yeah, the nail on the head. Yeah, and this is just it's 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 curious that the number is sixty thousand because that's how much the server was, and that's how much we took a loan out for. And a server <laughs> yeah. is like this physical thing that you can see and touch and know what it's doing. This is you know strategic planning is much more like in the ether. You know, where's the thing? Um, so that is just a an a, just a, a curiosity that it happens to be sixty grand. And uh, that reminds me, Michael, uh, when I was talking with Mark at Ed Jones about the loan that we did against to ourselves for the server and how I was pretty wary of that, um, but it proved that Mike Doyle was correct in that, you know, uh, while we were paying back a, a loan at, uh, to ourselves at an interest of yeah. 50%, we were bringing 6%. The market did better the market. than the interest rate, right? Uh, and I asked him uh, if that's something we could do for this deficit budget as well. And he said, there's no reason you couldn't if that's what the board decided they wanted to do. So that's, that remains an option too. What, sure. like I said, I don't think that we will, I can imagine that we will not be getting into the Ed Jones in 2022. I think that we can do it with what's in the cash in the, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, savings account with what we have on hand. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I, I you know, add that I think that what Carlos is bringing up is important. It's long-term strategic planning. Um, I, you know, I don't think there's a difference between what I'm asking. I just do think that we know uh, um, at some point we got to say we're working on a budget. It doesn't have to be tonight. Uh, and if there's additional information the board wants to see, uh, I do think that, you know, uh, this budget is is very workable. And, and um, you know, I, I would encourage you to, to go ahead and approve it tonight. But if there's additional stipulations that are necessary, I'm certainly happy to do that as well. So that, I mean, that could lead to more questions for Rob, uh, or it could lead to a motion if anyone's feeling. Um, it's, it's time to call the question with or without stipulations. Uh, and, and right, Rob is right. We could stand pat. We could just say, hey, Rob, uh, more info, please, punt. Um, so... I am I not a voting I'm, member as the chair, so I'm, someone, someone's going to have I'm to sorry, so I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to yep. jump in here for a second. I, you know, although I agree with Robin many things, and I do agree with him, I'm confident. It's just, I think it's for me, it's a placeholder. It's just a, a, a structure to, uh, you know, to see a timeline is a structure of, you know, okay, so these are the things we're working towards. Right, it's a physical thing that's out there. We make it concrete, and uh, and I don't know if that probably helps. That helps everybody in the long run. I think, and, uh, you know, yeah. All right, thank you, Carlos. And I don't know if that's potentially a motion. We do have a proposed budget in front of us. Um, we may not have exhausted questions, but if we have. I hope you guys don't mind if I take bites of pizza. There's probably plenty there, huh? You ordered for eight. You eat my pizza, huh? <laughs> I, I, I could stop by. I wonder where the deficit. <laughs> Where's that on the budget? And we can talk about the justice later. <laughs> pizza budget. And then put the pizza line item in there. Yeah. Uh, Chad, you've stuck in your baby, don't you, Chad? <laughs> You're hanging in and seeing the best and the worst of us. <laughs> on on that note, I did just hear him. I do have to get him to bed. So thank you guys for having me along for the ride. Sure. Yeah, nice you know you what all. you're getting into. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Thanks a lot, Chad. Right. <laughs> um, 
Go ahead, Rachel. Question. Is there actually is there actually a motion? No, I'm I've been I've been fishing for one. Is what I've been doing. And there's the potential for just a clean approval, approval with stipulations. Or Rob, we we have questions and go back and do something and come back with something. Uh, those seem to be the three options. How about a half punt where you we approve it? Is as long as we've heard from the people that haven't seen it or heard it or talked about it yet, like CJ. Mm -hmm. In other words, we solicit inputs for the people that couldn't be here tonight. And unless there's something that they bring up that means that we need to up provisional approval. Yeah, that's Visual. what I was. If you if you want, if you want to turn that into a motion, I I mean we. Well, it's it's me looking for a compromise. Um, I'd like to say yes to everything that Rob's done and what we're, we're, we're the water that we're skating on. That Mike Doyle's not here to defend, but to backs up Rob. Um, and uh, Carlos's points seem to be really smart, but I I can't imagine CJ not having also some other input on this. Uh, mm -hmm. So I. The, the idea of accepting it totally without any qualification of looking for votes, votes from other silent board members, um, that, that's the only part, part that I was looking for a slight compromise on. I like that idea. Provisional acceptance, waiting on um, input from CJ and Mike Doyle. Um, Sue, was that a motion? <laughs> I move that we provisionally accept the budget. Uh, yeah. Pending the review uh, by, by board members who aren't in attendance tonight. Okay, I think I think we do have a clean motion. Thanks, Sue. Mm -hmm. um, it's Dave. Uh, is 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 there a second to provisionally accept this budget? Um, Providing for the vetting of, uh, thank you, Rachel, the, uh, the vetting of this budget by board members who aren't present. How's that? That captured it? Yes. And uh, so, Rachel, do you know what you got yourself into when, when you seconded that? That sounded like clearly um, a clear motion, not a hedge motion. Um, yes. Great. So we, we've got um, Sue moving and Rachel seconding. Um, all those in favor of a, of a provisional acceptance of this budget, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay, and opposed? And Carlos, your mic was off. I don't know if that's an abstain or you just your mic was off. <laughs> I think I'm gonna abstain right now. Because okay. I think, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm abstain, I think the motion, yeah. Got it. So I've got a, a, a three yeah. count on approval, no nays, and one abstain. Um, and logistically, um, I guess we're charging Rob with an individual sit down with uh, CJ and Mike Doyle. That gets us, that gets us yep, to seven. Okay. Okay. So do we need, do we need, so in order for it to approve, do we need everybody to be on board with this? Is that what we're saying right now? Um, I mean, it, uh, like, like any other motion, majority rules. Um, Correct. So it's approved. I mean, basically. Well, well, the funny so, thing is, is yeah. that with an abstention and two not present, it's basically a tie right now. Um, so, so Rob would need to tw twist an arm or two behind the scenes. Uh, but, but I, I think, I think Rob, that's, that's especially, easy. you know, especially our treasure, I think, I think that's some of our, some of the wariness right now is, um, uh, yeah, Mike Doyle has sort of in the past, uh, generally said, yeah, we could do a deficit budget in this way or that way. Um, and the padding's there, but. If, if you could sit down with him and, and CJ 
and um, happy to yeah see if see if there'd be two more eyes there or two more stains there or what would what would be there but yeah presently the quorum is is you know three out of four ain't bad but in terms of the full board it makes the provision it makes the provisional acceptance make even more sense the fact that um, two aren't here one of them being our treasurer so who audits our 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 books there is we don't do audits at this point we've done financial we reviews we're not, in the past. we're not required to having an audit we are not you know the only reason um would be if i mean we've had discussions in the past uh and there are levels uh a full audit can be quite expensive we have in the past done what's called a financial review which is less expensive and less digging deep um there have has been no need for outside uh, uh um protocols or procedures needed for an audit. Uh, you know, oftentimes if a nonprofit is going to a foundation or something like that, they would want to have an audit. Um, but it's really up to the board of directors at this point as to whether or not they want to see if we pass muster. So it's been a few yeah. years. So, it, you know, it might be worth considering uh, looking at uh, whether we want to do a full audit or a financial review. I can certainly, th I think the last one probably was um, about five years ago. That was from my past where I was the director of the parent child center. And I wouldn't have dared uh, make some kind of a provisional budget without knowing that the auditors would understand. Yep. So that's why I asked. Yep. <clears throat> we used to do regular audits and it just turned out that they were, you know, just the numbers just rolled over. So it, it did not seem to be cost effective to have them as regularly as we were. That's but fine. as we if we as we divert you know potentially diversify our funding, there may be a need to do that. You know, mm -hmm. so it really, it's just that we're we are beholden to Comcast at this point. As right. Already, but but if more is coming in from different sources, we may want to. Yep. And really, if we do go really to foundations and ask for money, then you know there could be uh, they'd want they might want to see reviews or audits. So. Okay. Great. Um, I think we're at a point where. We we could uh, entertain a motion to accept the financial reports as most of the heavy lifting was with the budget. Yeah, I so move. Uh, Sue, Sue moves to accept the financial reports. And is there a second? I'll second. Rachel is seconding, thank you. Um, all those in favor of uh, accepting our financial reports for the evening, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And Carlos, uh, you're muted again. I don't know if you were an aye or an, uh, a nay or an abstain. I, 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 aye, aye. All right, aye, we, aye. we have unanimous consent on the uh, budget. <laughs> Sorry, on the financial reports. Better watch my mouth. Yes. Um, Rob, you're up for executive director's report. You change hats and be the same guy, though. Yeah, um, I, you know, that was probably the biggest thing. So I'm looking at my report to say, you know, um, I'm not sure that we have much more um, staff reports are moving forward. There is an opportunity now with this provisional acceptance of the budget to talk to staff about uh, compensation. I think that it might be appropriate to maybe uh, redo the personnel committee to talk about it, uh, how we would move forward. I've asked staff to, to, you know, we're having conversations about it. The, uh, you know, the, the uh, I don't know how much of this we can do in open meeting, uh, but we are anticipating that there is some, will be at least a, a cost of living increase. Uh, and then with this budget, uh, and, and actually it's quite large this year as a 6%, but I think it's a, a it's a good practice to do to do. So I've told staff that they can expect a 6% cost of living adjustment for their uh, compensation. We are getting in conversations about health benefits. Um, so, uh, you know, I can see that there might be some um, opportunities at the beginning of the year to talk about to, to get a vetting with the board, uh, the committee on the board uh, about the best way forward with some of those policies. Uh, we are also spending uh, quite a bit of time on inventory we're trying to get the inventory uh, finalized with the new stuff this year and get it into one place uh, website discussion has been going on quite a bit uh, we are looking at uh, improving our website uh, you know what do we like what do we don't like about it the obvious thing that we don't like 
is uh, the search capacity on it. It's very difficult to search and find things. So there's a, uh, um, and migrating to a platform called Localize that we've uh, we've signed on to, which is a cooperative content management system for for um, vid for video. So um, that's happening. Uh, Christopher's going gangbusters with some of the after school stuff. Um, uh, and yeah, we're just kind of uh, tying up and getting ready for the legislative session. So uh, we're looking at and have been in contact with staff at the state house and with the governor's office as to what will it look like. Uh, the last thing I got from the governor's office was that the state of the state address will be happening on January 5th. So that first three week of January is lining up pretty quickly here or teeing up pretty quickly. Um, and then I got in touch with the Sergeant at Arms and the IT guy at the State House about what they're planning on doing and they're getting back. We don't know legislative rules are still trying to figure out if they will even come back in person. But um, the plan is right now that they are, but they are giving it a real look because of the Omicron surge and stuff like that. So there, there may be a real chance that they go entirely virtual, virtual for the beginning of the session. So uh, we're trying to be nimble and on our feet and ready to deal with anything that might come to us. Uh, and, you know, as, as we know, for many years of working in the state house, things can change pretty quickly and pretty fast. So, uh, you know, keeping our, our lines of communication open with the, the key individuals at the state house and at the administration uh, so that we, we can be informed as quickly as possible so we can adjust any production that we might have to do. Uh, and obviously the rest of the band community is very interested in the state house. So they've been asking, what's your plan? Are you going to be there? Uh, there's sort of that, those banner events at the beginning of, this, of the session. And then there's sort of the general question of like what's happening in the committee rooms. Um, I know that there's been a lot of discussion as to whether or not they're going to do them in those tiny little rooms at the state house or move to other um, uh, real estate that the state can uh, participate in different community uh, committee rooms. But the idea of everybody, be, you know, and prior to the pandemic, everybody being packed into those committee rooms uh, does not sound appealing. So I'm sure they're, they're trying to figure out what to do about that. And, you know, the obvious question is, is which media it will be allowed. I mean, if they're going to limit the people that are in the committee rooms, what does that mean for media as well? So uh, hopefully we're well positioned. So, yeah. so Rob, a question oh, is, for yeah, my, my question is if, if it's going to be remote and still people are going to be at the state house um, having some meetings with smaller groups, is Orca Media in a position and also advertising to um, to the state that we could offer um, assistance in terms of audio and video capability for that streaming? Is that something that we could do? Uh, so you know we do feel that we can do a better production than what they're doing if they just put the camera at the table. Uh, you know, uh, the difficulty is that the camera at a wide shot with nobody manning it, uh, people don't really know who's talking or anything like that. So if there, uh, if we identify things that we want to be at, we think that we can do it better. We don't want to get in a position where we can say we can do all of it. We can't do every committee. We just don't have the resources to do that. So uh, we're, we're trying to be careful about saying that we can, we can come in and solve your problems for every committee room. Um, because that's not what we did. We would try to identify key committees or, or things that are in the news that we would we would want to get a camera operator at. Uh, but if we do have an opportunity to get a camera operator, we do think that the production will be better. So, will there be a van? Will there be a van meeting before the uh, legislative session starts? A van meeting? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Because it might be that the other van uh, operations would like to have some advice from us on what are the protocols oh, now. So, yeah, so I, th I mean, certainly there are key individuals, particularly with the uh, uh, Channel 17 or Town Meeting Television in, Mon in yeah. Burlington. So they they have been reaching out to us asking what their plan can can they help. Uh, so there there's some communication happening there for sure. Good, good. Uh, yeah, so then uh, we've gone through finances. I, I talked about the, the work that we've been doing with the ask and the advocacy, um, you know, it's been a lot of uh, developing relationships, uh, playing on relationships with uh, key legislators, identifying key committees, and that work continues pretty feverishly. Uh, I will say that Lauren Glenn has been a, a juggernaut. Uh, she's out there 
almost every day dialing up legislators trying to get them on board as champions or at least they'll say that they'll support the ask um you know and i've been you know they've been trying to coordinate uh, key people so as they identify legislators who might be in a particular access centers region then uh they'll do it so i'm enlisted so for instance to talk to uh, the Senate finance, which is shared by Senator Ann Cummings. Uh, so she's our Senator from Washington County. Uh, and then of course, Mary Hooper, which uh, chairs the appropriations in the house. She's our representative here from Montpelier. So uh, a lot of, a lot of flurry of activities in the last few weeks, as we get ready for the state house to open and the legislative session to open. Uh, Rob, is, is that written in a way, or I don't know how, how written it is, but is that $900,000, would that be distributed uh, based on size of access center or based on the, the the access centers that are experiencing the most loss? So that was actually a topic of a discussion this morning at the van board meeting, because the, the, we got the word from the advocacy team. If we do get the money, how is that then paid out? So the first thing we have to realize that if we get the $300,000 from the fiscal year 2022, 2021, 20, 21, 22, it have to be uh, expenditures that happened before July. So that's one timeline that ticks if we get to 300,000. And then um, the discussion sort of centered around um, the idea of uh, that exact question. And I think there was some, some feeling that, you know, if we're all paying into this legislative work and then we're, that we should all benefit from that, but also um, there might be some way to say that the people who are really seeing that the money going down are the people that needed the smaller centers. Uh, so we're looking at some sort of math formula that would help sort of get to that, that incorporates both of the ideas. And you would expect that the state would give Van the room to carve that up by itself or no, you, you it would be in the legislation. It, it would be, I think in the legislation with some direction or some, you know, counseling from Van to say, how do you, how does Van, so I, I, I'm not sure that it's a, a check to Van other, or, you know, the belief it, it, is that it would be similar to the COVID relief funds where we kind of provide the numbers. And then, although that was distributed, I think evenly across, everybody got a sort of the same amount. Um, so this, the new thing about this is, you know, supporting the people who are real, really seeing the numbers go down, uh, you know, and there's a variance that's across the state. As I said, I think we had nine access centers who were seeing the, the line go down. So. Um, and, you know, I, and I, I, I guess I'm a little bit worried about some of these strategies I'm discussing here and that we're actually putting this online and for people to watch. Uh, and uh, so I'm not sure if there, there's anything I said, but I guess I, I guess I'm really wary of, of getting too, too deep into the strategies. Sure. Well, there, I mean, there, it's public knowledge that this 900,000 is being floated around. Of yeah. course, somehow that if pending approval, there's a lot of ifs there. Yeah. It would have to be distributed in, in a way that um, people felt was equitable. So I, I think we're fully within our comfort. Uh, yeah, I think in general, public you, know, discussion you know that we're, we're, we're advocating, we're working with legislators who, are, are, who understand the importance that we play in our, in our, in our communities. Uh, we're getting a lot of good uh, feedback from them, um, but it's, it's a learning process for us at, at BAN as well, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, more on the executive director's report or uh, entertain a motion to accept. I move to, motion accept. to accept. I second, Sue. I think that was a three for one. Okay, Sue, Sue got it. Yeah, Sue got the motion and Carlos got the um, second to accept the executive director's report. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed nay. Unanimous acceptance of the executive director's report. Thank you, Rob. Old business. I've got one. Um, the uh, the whole uh, we had a, a visitor with a presentation about a radio station, Rob. And I, I was I with the licenses for micro to come out in 2022. Um, where, where does that all stand? So that initiative that's fallen by the wayside, or is that something that's, no, it's still in the, in the, in the, in the fire. Uh, uh, so I, I, I have, I, the last I spoke with, uh, Lou was 
probably four or five weeks ago. Um, she has now accepted a position as the manager of GDR. Right. So, uh, but she is in touch uh, probably, you know, monthly, I think. And Christopher and I have been talking about it of, of what exactly. So I don't, um, but I think that the timeline, you know, if there, was pushed back from the uh, FCC. So I think there's the window is, is not closing on us. I think there's still room to, to have that conversation uh, and probably due to touch back in with Lou and maybe bring her back, bring them back, sorry, uh, to uh, the van board, to our board and uh, talk a little bit about what, what that looks like for, for next steps if we're still interested. So Lou remains a fan of, of Orca. Um, housing a radio station just may not have the time I, I don't think that she has the time. I think, you know, she, they have the time. Okay. All right. That was my one old business. Um, any other old business? Um, I, I guess this would be new business. It sounds like we've run out of old business. So I guess we are up on new business. Go ahead, Rob. Well, I just was uh, curious as to the process for, um, Chad, if, you, if the board is interested, uh, I know he presented. I don't know if you guys are ready to vote on it or how you feel about it. I also would add that, you know, I my conversations with Rachel, I think she's an excellent candidate. Uh, Rachel is the uh, director of the Waterbury Library uh, and has, a, I think, a librarian is a great person to add to the board, as well as somebody who happens to be working in a community that we, uh, we, we are very interested in. So, um, I don't know how you guys, I mean, uh, I'd like, to, I'd like to see like a resume or curriculum vitae for each. Yeah. Um, but maybe people are itching to move this evening. I, you know, I'm, I'm wary of adding an even number. That's my other piece. It's great if they come in in pairs and we remain with our odd number. So we. You're, you're wary of, of not adding an odd. You said you're wary of adding, adding an even number, but of having an even number. Having an even, having an even number. Because if we add even numbers, we do get the odd number. We ha did we have eight for a minute, and it was just everything was a pain in the butt, like with quorums where we needed five for a quorum on eight, and um, but um, that though, though it's my two cents. Love to see some some paper for each. Well, well, Mike, Mike D might right. He's going to phase out at some point. Does that bring our numbers down? Yeah, that I mean, and that that's right. We don't we don't have to maintain the nine, but we can grow to nine, and then that gives uh, veteran board members a little room to assess their um, uh, the viability of remaining on the board for them personally. So, yes, good point, Carlos. Or, or, or leapfrog, right? Or leapfrog. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well said. So, Rob, you interviewed Chad already, right? I not, you know, I not in any sort of real sense of a, as an interview. I mean, it's it's just a. I spoke okay. to him. He said he, you know, actually, you know, he was interested, and I said, well, I, you know, it's really up to the board. The process is not really through me. Uh, it's really uh, at the discretion of the board is to decide whether they would want to add you to the to the to the open positions. And so, um, well, I would I would recommend that. The, the besides the uh, getting the paper trail and finding out the resume, that Mike might be able to just call him and talk to him about what how he felt about the meeting that he sat in on and uh, any other ideas that he might have, just to sort of warm us up, you know, to to having him be with us. But did you guys get a, a favorable impression? Or, or I, mean, I did. I I did too. I I mean I I, I know him from from before this meeting um, and he seems capable. But again, I don't know all his references, um, but he seems more than capable. It's a very impressive resume. Yeah, and that um, filmmakers collective he was speaking on, you could see some good cross, cross collaboration there. Yes, and similar kinds of collaboration professionally that we're trying to do with Van and stuff. Right. So yeah, no red flags, just, you know, process. Yep. Yeah, I think yeah. we didn't really get a sense of, of him. We got a, a little bio, but 
you know, it'd be good if you talk to him, I can, um, you know, just feel out what kind of person you'd be adding. What kind of personality would we be adding to the board? Yeah, yeah. We, um, I, I'd be happy to once I get once I get some paper to sort of have to speak from. So, Rob, could you facilitate that? Yeah, exactly. That's why I would, what I imagine is I would I would connect the two of you and and say you know we're looking for for some that CV or resume. Yeah. Uh, and actually, as a, a filmmaker, he he has a reel as well. Great, hmm. great. And then I can ask Rachel the same thing so that you guys might have a little bit more sense. I mean, I, I'm sure that she would plan on attending the February meeting so that you guys can get a sense to know her, or you know, maybe it's the same thing where Michael gets a chance to talk with her and gets a little bit to know about that. So we can move that process a little bit forward so that we're in that that two people uh, realm for you know for Michael's concerns on the on the forum. Rachel, what's her name again? Her last Rachel name? Rachel Muse, M U S E. Wow, it's very uh, aesthetic name. Hi. We'll have a muse for the whole organization. Oh, we've, we've been dying for a muse, haven't we? <laughs> Two Rachels on a board. I know. I, don't know. <laughs> oh, I hope they don't clash. <laughs> kind of great. Does she spell it E L or A E L? That's uh, the distinction. I believe it's E L. Yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, I welcome her openly and I look forward to meeting her. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. Uh, the other old business, I you know, as I uh, emailed you, we, uh, John Block's passing, and I've been looking uh, for a way to, you know, we had talked in the past, you know, we knew this day was coming, so, uh, you know, whether it's a scholarship or I had thought yes. about naming the studio, the John Block studio, uh, you know, I think that with a scholarship, it would be great, but there's always already been a pretty established one with the Campitelli Fund through Brunt Media Factory, uh, and they have done gangbusters and have developed this trust. And so I, I don't know if it's, um, I, it probably could be certainly worth it for kids. I mean, there might be other kids who would be applying for it. Uh, but I think that I would like to move forward with uh, some kind of plaque acknowledging that the studio would be forever known as the John Block studio. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I think we were, we, I, yeah, we, we did discuss that in the last board meeting, so. If you're looking for a specific approval, I'm sure you'd get it, but I'd say I, I, I see consensus no. shaking of hands head, so I don't think that you guys would get too mad at me if I did that. So no. great, great. Please go forth and name. <laughs> yeah, it's a really it's a nice idea. And Stone and, you know, we can even maybe do some press around it or something like that. So Don Block Studio in Stone Hall. Yep. Yeah. And um also, just it's a I don't know if it's new business, but loose end um, personnel committee would meet on if we do. You were sort of uh, bidding for that to happen. That would be the off month. Uh, Carlos and Dave, how does January twenty sixth look? The Tuesday. Just well, throw January that out. for me. I mean, I mean January is gonna. It's very hard. I could do February, but January like that. The whole month is gonna be. It's very packed for me. Okay. This year. This year. This Got next it. year. I'm open um, on the 26th, and I can probably find other openings in February. All righty. Um, well, Rob, it sounds like you had some very specific things to figure out in terms of, like, how to um, get a little hone in on the, the compensation end of the budget more. So I – if. Dave and myself assisted you on the 26th. You'd, you'd have some shape to these yep. questions. Yep. All right. Um, so let's plan for that. And then, so um, the fourth, and now this is speaking to the whole board, the fourth uh, Tuesday in February, which would be our next board meeting. I am, is, it's the 26th. Is that right? No, goodness. How did I get to 2008? 28. <laughs> I somehow scrolled back to 2008. Oh, twas a better time. Or was it? No, there was a complete, complete economic collapse back then. We think we... Um, yes. I got the 22nd of February is the... Of 2022. No, it's, it's the 28th. 28th. Oh, Tuesday. Right. 
Yep, yep, Tuesday. I know I, it's the second day of the week, but right, Sunday's there. Well, it's the old Washington's birthday before it got collapsed in the president's. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm actually out of town then. I could do the 15th, or you guys could just have a free for all and have a, I guess Carlos would chair with the co, with the treasurer chair, or we could move it to the 15th. The it's, third Tuesday. I think it's okay with me. Are people all right with the 15th? Mm -hmm. I'm yep. hearing thumbs up and mm hmms and okays. <laughs> all right. So um, the 15th it is for our next board meeting, February 2022. We'll see you in the new year. Happy um, holidays. Yeah. Enjoy all of them. And then um, Dave, myself, and, and Rob will sit down the 26th of January. Okay. And I think, I think, um, we can call it an evening. Hey, well, thank you all. At uh, eight eleven, for those keeping track. Thanks, Carlos. You're welcome. Um, yeah, uh, it's been quite a year, and I and I think we all deserve a nice collapsing here around the holidays. <laughs> yep. Take care of yourselves. Hey, hey, Rob, I got the grant. Thank you. Great, that's good to hear. Awesome. Yeah, that sounded like good news. I'll I'll it's take my very fee good when news. you get it, whenever you get it. If you need lights, I have many lights coming in, LED lights. Oh, yeah. We got 40,000 lights. If you got lights, $40,000. So I'm excited. Thank That's you. Good. Yeah. Well, Mike, are you done with your commute for a month or so? Yeah, it's only half an hour. No one wants to hear me complain about a half hour commute, but boy, I'm not <laughs> used to it. Um, no, it's not a month. I get almost, almost two weeks off, whoop de doo. But um, <laughs> we got a lot accomplished here. It feels like. Yeah, thank yeah. you guys. And um, yeah, enjoy enjoy them all. Enjoy all your holidays. Take care of yourselves. Yeah, and give, give our best to the staff. You know, we uh, yeah, we didn't as any nog or anything there. But uh, we're very I'm, appreciative of them. I'm due to go. They're probably listening, but uh, I'm due to go make them some fudge. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. So um, that's my chore tonight is to go make them some fudge before they do. Your night's just getting started, huh? Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it may not happen tonight. <laughs> no fudge on the fudge. No fudge. No scrimped on the fudge. Well, thank you, we everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm sorry. What's that, Sue? I just wanted to ask you one question. If you um, and Chris have been uh, talking about the production video, about making a production. Making uh, the story of Orca? Yeah. Story uh, of Orca. How, you know what? Yeah, I haven't touched that with him on the, that with him for a few weeks, so I'll, I'll I'll be sure and bring that back up with him so we can try to move that along. Yeah. Thanks, okay. thanks for the reminder. Yeah. All right. Okay. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. You too. Take care. It was so good to see y'all again. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Good, good to see you, Rachel. You. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.